All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples of comics that I would not purchase right now. And to be honest, I probably would not grade these books either. And by and large, it comes down to timing for me. Some of these books are better than others, but generally speaking, these are books that I just wouldn't touch at the moment because of timing. And again, there is one here that I just would not touch at all, but we're going to talk about that. And technically, we're going to talk about it first up. It is this book right here, Marvel Comics Presents Issue Number 95. And this book has been popping up across social media for like the last week or so. And I've seen people put posts up talking about, you know, how high will this book go? Fingers crossed that it doesn't go any higher than it is right now. And I say that for several different reasons. This book started to become popular. Marvel Comics Presents 95 because it is being touted as the origin of Wolverine's costume, his uniform, his blue and yellow uniform that is being seen across social media, but eventually in the Deadpool 3 movie. That is why this book has jumped up in popularity. And the, the challenge here, well, there, there are several. First and foremost, you actually don't even see the blue and yellow uniform in issue number 95. What you see is the is the origin of where it came from. A young native woman basically made a uniform for Wolverine while he was recuperating from a battle that he was in. And the markings on that uniform resemble his current uniform. That That is true. But it's not until issue number 97 that you actually see the correctly colored uniform with the right stylings and markings that resembles what we are going to get in Deadpool 3. So again, Marvel Comics Presents 95 is not a book that I would touch right now because I... I don't know if there's much value in seeing the uniform in this issue, right? If people are picking it up for speculative purposes, I don't know if there's much value in it. Now, if you are a Wolverine fan, I would say read the story, right? Read the story, wait to pick it up because potentially right now is not the time to actually pick it up because values are a little high, in my opinion, for both raw and graded copies versus what you could potentially get a little ways from now. But let's go ahead and take a look at the data. And as you can see, there isn't much data, right? There, there are only 34 universal copies of this comic out there and 43 total graded out there, period, right? And uh, what is it? Nine of them are signature series. There potentially is a reason for that. There is a reason why this book isn't really showing up in the census, and it might have to do with what I was alluding to a hot second ago. There are 16 copies that came back at a 9.8. And uh, let's see if there's actually been a sale. I think there was one in here. Yeah, one in here in uh, June. And we actually don't know what that one actually sold for, but you can see a little bit of a spike there at uh, $75 back in October of 2022. My, my guess is, I don't know, I would have to look it up to see what the one went for in June before all of this news started to swirl. But again, not a ton of copies out there. The book isn't worth a whole lot at present, but but I, even with that, I would not pick this book up right now. At the end of the day, you'll have to decide uh, what it is that you might want to do. So while we are in the vein of Wolverine, I thought that I would talk about another book that I would also not pick up right now. And it's this one right here. It is Wolverine issue number 88. It's a cool cover. There is no doubt about that. This is a cool cover. And it is the first time that Deadpool and Wolverine battle one another. And I think first battle books are always cool. Are they great long-term investments? I don't think so. I really don't. Cool cover. Great artists worked on it. It's a great a uh, key, but as far as paying big money for this, for the belief that it's going to increase in value or for speculative purposes, I don't know about that. If you're a big Wolverine or Deadpool fan, cool book to have in your collection, but you might want to wait. You Just like the first one, you may want to wait for a better time to pick this book up 
if you don't already have it. And, and this one has uh, fluctuated a couple of times in terms of its popularity. Uh, and we probably are coming out of that lull since the last the last spike. But let's go ahead and take a look at this one. The 9.8 is where I think the sweet spot is for this one. I generally feel that way for newer books. There are 2,000 universal copies of this book out there, 2,100 total graded copies that include signature series, restore, qualified, etc. But as we uh, look at the data, what we can see is that 21.2% of these actually came back at a 9.8. There are 423 9.8s out there. And the 30-day average for this book is $398. Its one-year average is 440. And that probably was part of that lull that I was speaking. Or no, that was the, the previous. Whoa, look at that. That's crazy. In 21, somebody was paying 746 bucks for this book. Wow. That. That is a lot of money here. That That's your spike right there. Uh, I feel like that was around the time that there was a lot of speculation previously about this cover. October of 2022, $597 is what it was going for. Then you saw a little bit of a dip, a little bit of a spike, a little bit of a lull there, and now a, a little bit of an uptick there as well. Uh, most recent price for this book, $405 is what someone paid on the same day at an auction. Someone was able to pick it up for $230. And before that, it was a couple of best offers. Uh, somebody put it out here in July of this year, $780 best offer. A lot of these, look at that, a lot of best offers. 711, 712, 713, 716 all best offers. We would have to go to eBay Therapy to find out what that book won for. But again, this is not a book that I would touch right now. If I And I have multiple copies of it. I can tell you that for a fact. Multiple copies of this. I haven't graded any of them uh, just because I don't know if there is long-term value to this book to warrant me sending it in, getting it graded. Uh, it is not necessarily a book that um, I prize, but that's that's personal preference for me. You'll have to decide what it is that you might want to do. So we're going to turn our attention from, uh, from uh, Marvel to some DC books, right? We're going to look at a couple of DC books. And the first up is this one. Cool book right here. I have a couple of copies of this one in the collection. I, I have not sent any of them in to be graded. It is Infinity Crisis number five, specifically the Jim Lee variant. This book is the first appearance of Jaime Reyes, the Blue Beetle, who is going to be uh, starring in a movie upcoming and is also going to be continuing in some capacity in the new DCU uh, by James Gunn and Peter Safran. 9.8 is the sweet spot for this book. Not a ton of copies out there on the census. 1564 total, total universal blue label, 1712 overall. And uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, maybe help people to see it a little bit better. The 30-day uh, average for this book is $228. It's one year is 245. So definitely down from from the, the one year, but still potentially a little bit higher than what I would want to pay for this book right now. I feel like, I personally feel like there's a little bit of some uncertainty around speculating on DC movies at this point. I think DC might need to get the ball rolling, have some success with live action before people feel comfortable. But if you back up to November of 2022, this book was going for $165. 165 bounced up to 184 at the beginning of this year, spiked uh, to 297 and is down a little bit to 230. I have a feeling that uh, it, it probably will experience a bump. How much? I don't know. Again, you'll have to figure out why you are thinking about buying this book, but backing up in uh, October of 21, this book was selling for $475. If yeah, that would have been the time for me to send them in and turn around and sell them. But again, a, a ton of money there, but but night and day to some degree or another between where that was and where it is right now. My feeling is that uh, we could see a little bit of a blip with this book once the movie drops, uh, but how much to be determined uh, we, we potentially won't see much of anything in the way of a blip again, because of the decoupling and uncertainty that exists. Only time will tell how this plays out, but it is not necessarily a book, uh, that I would pick up right now versus waiting. If I happen to be a, a Jaime Reyes, uh, fan. All right. Bouncing over to the very last book that I want to look at is this one right here. It is green lantern issue. Number 59. I had a chance to pick this book up raw from a comic shop, uh, in Arizona. I think it was in Arizona 
Arizona. Pick this one up. Cool book. First appearance of Guy Gardner. Uh, really, really cool book right here. This is a great book. There is no doubt about that. I, I, I love these older books. This one is from 1968. Great cover. Uh, Gil Kane did the art on this one. Uh, hard, hard to turn away from this one. But again, when you look at this one, we're not going to go too deep into this one. But when you start to look at uh, the one year, which is in this this column here, the one year versus the 30 day, you will see that there has been a noticeable uptick in the 30 day in almost every instance. And, and that is because we now know that an actor has been selected to portray Guy Gardner in the live action. Uh, we don't know when the movie will be seen, given the, the current strikes that are going on in Hollywood. And you could say that about just about every book that I've shown in this video. We don't know what's going to happen with these books because of the strikes that are ongoing, which might create buying opportunities a little bit later as prices drop off. Time will tell. This first set of books from the 9.6 to the 9.4 to the 9.2, I do believe are pretty much holding steady. From their one year out to the 30 day, I don't think that there's been a whole lot of sales and, and definitely isn't a, there aren't a whole lot of copies of this book on the census in those specific grades. So I would just ignore those. I would just throw those out. Those are what they are. Uh, but as you scroll down the 8.5, you can see the 30 day is 988 versus 822. So definitely an uptick there. The uh, For the 8.0, it is 752 versus 723. So an uptick there. Again, an uptick at the 7.5. Again, an uptick at the 7.0. An uptick at the 6.5. The 6.0. Again, you go down the list. There are noticeable upticks here in and what is happening. I think there's only one. I think there's one that is actually down, and it is the 4.0. Could just be a factor of somebody got a smoking deal on a single book, and that skewed things, and that's why we're seeing that. Again, great book. I would potentially hold off on this book primarily because of timing. You may be able to get this really awesome book a little bit later after some of the FOMO goes away and the excitement around the casting, that might be the great time to pick this book up. And again, th this is something that I could potentially say about a lot of the books that I just showcased, but I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. These books are generally good books. My, my critique of them is about the timing and not necessarily about the substance of the book with the exception of Marvel Comics Presents issue number 95. I just wouldn't touch that one in any way, shape, or form. With that said, we're going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, I definitely want to encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I want to invite you to do that now. That way, you won't miss any of the content that comes out from the channel. If you want to reach out to me, you can do that on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. This thing on. Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yo. Should you practice art or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know. The one that's gonna be a master, the one that's more than a rapper, the one that's an educator, the one that seeks enlightenment, he travels with concepts, he's got the mindset expansive, he understands that his time combined with travel and concepts makes his mind convex, sort of like when you look at a brain scan, straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect, now we in distinct rooms of pure souls having them conversations, synergy and combinations, you blind, we waiting, Indian style and the gold.